Initiated this meetings with Aspen uh, family, uh, having three main goals. First one, to tell you our story, uh, like from personal perspective, uh, what's going on. Most important is to have a commu communication, which is a two-road street, and also to invite all of you stay stand uh, more strongly with Ukraine. We hope to win more friends. We hope to uh, to engage more of you uh, to stay with us in this fight for. For, 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 for values, uh, which especially for Aspen community is a crucial part of our mission because we, in our mission, we have this value-based leadership part and we do believe that values, it's not just declarations, it's about actions. It's the way how we act. So thank you so much for all who support us and we feel the support, and especially Italian society and government. Aspen Institutes are based on values. From values, it follows politics. That is important. Uh, there is a, a, the contrary view from politics, values follows. This is the view of non-democratic, non-liberal regimes. For us, is exactly the contrary. So uh, we are based on the same values, on the same views of the individuals and communities, because the two things go together. And uh, so we are trying to support you as far as we can as Aspen Institute Italy. Uh, I should say that Italy, not Aspen Institute Italy, well, despite half of the members of the government are a member of Aspen Institute Italy, by the way. And Italy is showing, in my opinion, a considerable attention to Ukraine, Ukraine and Ukrainian people. This is the first time, in my view, uh, that a war in Europe is considered to be a war for all of Europe. This is, this is clear. This was not the case with the Balkan Wars uh, some decades ago. Uh, nowadays, we, we all are, in a sense, on the, on the same front. Uh, we made many mistakes in the past as Europeans, looking to our relationship with Russia. Uh, our gas dependency is a, is a test case, is a case in point. Uh, but now we, we would like to discuss today which is the situation, which are the prospects, what we can do to, to help. Ukraine will win. And I think we've misunderstood the strength of the Ukrainian character and frankly speaking, the weakness of the Russian character. What you see in Bucha, what you see in Mariupol are examples of the weakness of Russian character. And what you see by the in, intense unity of Ukraine, regardless of faith, regardless of language, regardless of region, regardless of previous votes for presidents. People used to look at all of this different data and say the country was divided. Today, more than ever, what we see is that was an incorrect assessment of what matters to Ukrainians. I'll say two things. One is we are very grateful for the support that we're getting from Europe, from the United States, from all of the democratic countries. But no, it's not enough. No, it, it's not enough because the war is not over. So if we take military support, we have been given too little too late, and we need more, particularly on the air defense side. And second on sanctions, frankly, the sanctions uh, have not been enough. We see that simply by the Russian economy coming back uh, after an initial uh, decline. We see that the current account balance of Russia is being funded by the European purchase of oil and gas. So whatever sanctions we've put on the Central Bank of Russia, they initially had an effect. But that effect is being whitewashed by the continuous purchase of oil and gas by Europe so that the, do the, the dollar reserves are refilling daily because of those purchases. And so, no, on sanctions, we need to sanction all of the Russian banks and we need to close all the loopholes for that financial system functioning. And most importantly, we need to cease, stop, ban the purchase of oil and gas from Russia. We believe that uh, for Ukraine, this is not uh, uh, this is not just uh, the uh, you know the war with the neighbor. We believe that this is the conflict between Asia and Europe, the uh, authoritarian um, style and the democratic style of leadership. And we believe that uh, Ukraine has made its choice. 
um, we are pro-democratic, we are pro-European, and uh, finally, uh, we expect that the European family will accept us as, uh, as one of you. We have divided the economic recovery plan to two parts, uh, something that we do immediately as the wartime economy and the um, post-war economic development plan. In terms of what we are doing right now is the protection of internal uh, producer. We have launched um, various measures of uh, supply side um, support and uh, it proved very effective. We loaded Ukrainian factories uh, that produce food with government orders already on the third day of war and they were able to produce in the regions where we cannot uh, bring food by trucks or trains and this is something that uh, saves people. Uh, we have also um, launched measures to simplify the life of businesses. Uh, we have large program of businesses relocation. To sum up on, on the, on the um, economic recovery plan, we believe that here um, our only way to survive and uh, to rebuild the country is to become a member of the European uh, Union uh, in 24 months from the ceasefire agreement. And uh, we see ourselves aiming at four uh, specific pillars of this uh, development, the um, uh, access to the markets of G7 and the European Union, uh, which is the most effective tool uh, to get development through trade. Second is measures of positive migration uh, inflow. And um, uh, we will have to rebuild the scale of the country, of course. Third, um, we have uh, to focus on several industries such as military and aerospace, uh, food production, uh, metal works and engineering, uh, and of course, IT, um, and uh, to focus on that. Um, uh, and uh, last but not least, we will have to upheld the uh, capital uh, investments level uh, at uh, about 35% of GDP. Russia continues its aggression only based on the revenues they have from oil and gas sphere. And if you turn back to the history of invasions, you will see that they've started aggression only when the prices on oil and gas were on their peak. Remember 2008, remember 2014. All, all the time they started their military campaigns only when the prices were on the high. And now what we see, we see that only this year, Russia may earn one third more in the budget revenues from gas and oil. It means that they can earn due to depreciation of ruble and the raise of prices in dollars on oil and gas. And additional revenues to their budget is approximately 100 billion. Now we advocate not a full ban on oil and gas. We advocate more smart approach, which consists on the different options. And we call it a salami tactic, which means that you may start from the very unpainful, but very crucial issue to ban LNG. To ban LNG from Russia, it means only 3% of your market, but it will have a kind of psychological effect due to the fact that Russia and Putin per se, they still think that they have unlimited indulgence and they can do whatever they want because you are afraid to ban energy sources and to introduce any kind of embargo on energy products. It also may consist of the ban 
on seaborne oil and oil products, which actually already started to happen due to the position of business. And now business went ahead and governments are quite not active because they are more afraid of political consequences. Despite all the pictures from Mariupol, from Bucha, from other places where you directly don't want to call things by its own names. And that's a kind of mm, very unfair tactic because you think that your societies are not ready to sacrifice their economic interests and to follow the values and to follow the principles you were advocated for years. So we still think that it is a possibility to introduce the so-called Iranian model of sanctions against Russia on gas fear. When you can continue to get Russian gas, but not to finance Russian military machine. Just preserve all financial resources Russia now receives from the supplies of gas in your own accounts and not to finance Russia. They will not be able to interrupt supply because it's physically impossible. The history of Ukraine and uh, its authentic culture, like it comes with other nations that were once uh, conquered first by Russian Empire and then incorporated in the Soviet Union is almost unknown among the ordinary Russians. People don't know. Russians don't know this uh, history. This applies to the Tatars, Belarusians, Kazakhs, Armenians, Georgians, Azerbaijans, and others too. In view of the majority of these nations, um, similarly to those and others that now create the Russian Federation, now create Russian Federation, and do not have their own dependent states. The ordinary Russians has an imperial optic of supremacy. It is not obligatory to be aggressive or ex expansionists, but always Russian-centric and uh, paternalist. That is the result of education, culture, and informational policy of the last uh, few centuries. Uh, if, you, we, if we open um, uh, actual Russian sociology, official and unofficial, and, def and the de facto silent consensus of the uh, vast majority of Russians argue that Russians are ready to accept the crimes of the klepto-oligarchic elite in their personal well-being is not harmed and their country is considered strong in this environmental in this uh, it is easy to carry out manipulation we and you in european we, uh, union uh, live completely outside of putin's world view that are russians who urgently need to escape from them because they will lose everything first of all they will lose themselves putinism and millions is not alone Putinism and millions of his Russian apologists are destroying the rest of the, all the good that once existed in Russian culture. We understand that uh, peace is about fighting evil, not about protesting against evil, but fighting by actions, as my colleagues already mentioned. So I invite and uh, ask all of you to stand with Ukraine in this global fight for democratic values uh, we are frontline and uh, we are very grateful for being uh, big support uh, to our to our to our country. This was the most moving event we ever did, I think, as Aspen Italia with any other Aspen in the world. It was such terrible situation and, and we are glad to be here. That we should be here. The tragedy of the moment is asking for immediate decisions for handling the world in the right way. But we have to, to think about the future. We have to think now to reconstruct Ukraine after the disaster. The Marshall Plan was not made after 18 of May 1945, it was planned before. So I think this is 
something how our countries, all Europe, all the Western world, not just the Western world, uh, should think now because life is going on, thanks to God. Thank you so much, we are here.